Our second speaker is Dr. Tracy Zhao of uh, University of Hong Kong, uh, HKU. So Dr. Tracy is an assistant professor at the Center for the Enhancement of Teaching and Learning in the University of Hong Kong. She has been actively involved uh, in engaging in uh, identifying, collecting, and promoting exemplary teaching and learning practices in HKU and beyond through a community of practice approach. The Tracy is also actively engaged in higher education research and uses it to inform her practices. Her research interests include academic development, intercultural group work, and also knowledge management. So today, Dr. Tracy will talk about supporting software as an interdisciplinary undertaking, a reflection on multiple collaborative endeavors. Dr. Tracy, please, over to you. Thank you very much, Professor Chen, for your very nice introduction. I would also like to thank Vice Chancellor Professor Mohammed Kazim Sawadi for his opening and very generous welcoming. And uh, uh, my name is Tracy, and this uh, I'm talking about supporting Soto as an interdisciplinary undertaking. It's mostly based on my reflection over a quite long Soto journey I've been undergoing. Uh, and uh, I also will link it to some of the work we do in our Center for the Enhancement of Teaching and Learning. I guess it's quite similar to Professor Chen's Center in, in UNIMAS. Okay, so this is how we support SOTO at the University of Hong Kong. Um, basically, if you look at the um, circle in the middle, you will see three big areas. Professional development, we have SOTO workshops, Trust that you have also attended several uh, sort of workshops in your university. And then uh, we have a teacher learning connections as a new, new newsletter disseminating some of the sort of work. Or even if it's not yet a sort of work, it's a reflective practice. We also share it through this e-newsletter focused on teacher and learning. And on the right hand side, we had scholarship of teacher and learning we put teaching development grants under that. That's because um, SOTO is one of the required outputs of any teaching development grant. So a professor or a teacher applying for a teaching development grant, they need to specify what kind of SOTO output they are going to generate after getting the grant and after completing the grant. So it's related to SOTO and then at the bottom of the uh, graph, it's reward and recognition. Similar to Unimus, um, social achievement is recognized at one, as one criteria for teaching excellence awards through teaching portfolios. So these three um, areas highlight the support we provide for academics to engage in SOTO at the University of Hong Kong. It seems from the opening talk of vice, your vice chancellor, we are sharing a very similar approach. But then um, I might talk about something that's not very often discussed in the SOTO uh, practice. It's about interdisciplinarity and SOTO. Um, before I voice my opinion how interdisciplinary SOTO could be, let's look at the definition or some of the features of these four um, vocabulary. So disciplinary is within the boundary of one discipline. It's simple to understand. Of course, you can argue the boundary can be difficult to define. That may be right, but let's just continue to look at the multidisciplinary, interdisciplinary, and transdisciplinary to see how they might be different. So multidisciplinary, in my view and according to Evan, it's involving more than one discipline, but the effects are addictive, meaning that one plus one equals two. And interdisciplinary involves more than one discipline, but there needs to be crossing disciplinary boundaries and development of integrated knowledge. Some people may say um, that's often easier said than done. Yeah, you are right. 
it's not easy to achieve in any case. So I, in my journey, I feel it took me years to enter into an interdisciplinary space. Finally, transdisciplinary. Actually, I don't think I've been close to transdisciplinary in any of my uh, projects or collaboration. But maybe you can make the judgment after you hear my experience. So transdisciplinary is featured by a blurred, um, a blurring of disciplinary boundaries. And you need to develop integrated knowledge into a meaningful whole. So that's very challenging in any context, including short hope. OK, so um, my presentation is organized by the several attempts in my sort of journey, or you can say experience. So my very first one is almost eight years ago. It's about student learning in a common core course. And I didn't even know the name of SOTO, and I didn't know what I did was related to SOTO when I started, because all interested me and what put me curious about are two questions about student learning. The first question is how to improve student ability in generate engineering solutions, and whether a collaborative problem solving approach can enable them to develop high quality engineering solutions. So this is basically a common core course taught by engineering professors. And uh, um, I'm very fortunate to present after Dr. Preeman because he has already uh, highlighted the importance of team-based learning. Actually, collaborative problem solving is one type of team-based learning with a problem at the end as the um, major output of the team-based process. OK, so we did uh, things like um, we designed some new collaborative problem solving process and evaluate its effectiveness. The new process was previously students were in team of four or team of five, um, but then they just submit their reports to the teacher. Our new process involved two teams working on two specific parts of an engineering solution and they need they need to debate they need to argue and convince the other side also a team of four to use their solution or to revise and innovate their solution so it's called a new collaborative problem solving process or you can call it structured controversy in an engineering context that that's our intervention we designed that and we collect data from students report before and after this intervention, focus groups with students as a qualitative approach, and also survey pre and post tests on their collaborative problem solving skills. OK, what happened is I'm going to show you some conversations between us. Um, why, when I said us, it means me as someone uh, from an educational research background with the engineering professor who taught the course. And whether this is disciplinary, multidisciplinary, and interdisciplinary, I would let you to decide. So the questions I got often asked at the beginning when I started this intervention or the project was, how can survey and focus groups be used to collect evidence? They are just opinions. And then a civil engineer, engineering professor illustrated this point by saying, when we are building a bridge, we can say that it might work in sunny days, but it doesn't work in rainy days, right? So can you tell me whether your approach worked or not in a more definite term? But as someone who are so used to using surveys, focus groups, I would question back um, why we can't use survey and what does a definite term mean? And like what Dr. Preeman had just showed, every statistical test has a confidence level, right? Um, with, uh, how large is your p-value? So for us, there is no 100% confidence. We always have a p-value um, that tells us this might not work in a certain circumstances, but this is not accepted by my partner who are engineering professors. 
And then, so my illustration um, in an abstract way of my first subtle attempt was that we have subtle questions. And it was situated in a common core course taught by engineering professor. And I used social sciences and education research methodologies to do the intervention. And these two circles don't overlap in my view. And soon after I started my second attempt, you can read the reference uh, at the bottom to see how long it was. It was like five or six years ago. And the second question we, I ask is, can authentic experiences provided through simulations develop civil engineering identity in a capstone project? So again, I'm working with the same engineering professor on the second attempt of our project. I even forgot how I convinced him to continue because he seems not be very convinced in the first attempt. But then uh, again, we use intervention. We design new authentic scenario and evaluate the effectiveness. We again use survey and we look at students' performance in the simulation modules. But are you interested in the conversations we have? Our conversations change, believe it or not. So let again, I will let you decide whether it's disciplinary, multi or interdisciplinary. So the questions we ask are, what kind of survey questions can tell students' engineering identity? And my response would, uh, was, as an engineering professor, what do you feel most proud of yourself? That's the important information I need when I design the survey for them. And uh, I was also asked, how do I know if my simulation design is authentic enough? And I would say, let's use action research, multiple cycles to design, redesign, and improve. But I need your help on what counts as authenticity in your case, because I really don't know whether this uh, civil scenario, uh, civil engineering scenario is authentic or not without the input from the engineering professor. And then the question I got from them is action research. How is it different from design thinking that we use in engineering? You probably see that we slightly move closer. So my illustration of our collaboration is that we again have subtle questions. We have course taught by engineering professor, but there is some overlapping here. We call constructed survey instruments and we co-developed the definition of what authenticity means in that particular course. Okay, so soon, not quite soon, maybe there are several years after, I started my third attempt and I moved institutions. So previously I was in Hong Kong University of Science and Technology with a close collaboration with the engineering professors and this project started when I entered the University of Hong Kong and uh, I've been working with professors in more than um, 10 disciplines. So this is the new question I frame. How can we enhance intercultural interaction in the classroom of architecture, law, science and social sciences? And you might need a bit of background of Hong Kong to understand how challenging it is to introduce the concept intercultural interaction. Um, Hong Kong wants to position it as the education hub in Asia. Sorry, colleagues in Malaysia and Singapore, we are quite ambitious to do this. Um, but um, one of the issue we hope to achieve is to really have students from Hong Kong, from mainland China, and international backgrounds to work together so that they can learn from each other, truly developing their intercultural competence. But this is very difficult. If you have read any news related to Hong Kong, there are many sensitive political and society issues that prevent students from working together. And in the literature, even in um, multicultural society, like Australia, like in the UK, intercultural interactions are never easy. So but this is what interests us in several disciplines. 
Okay, so the method of inquiry we use is we use participatory action research. So we design some group work processes and group work tasks and the implementation process. We do it, we reflect and redesign. There were two cycles. And again, we um, at this time, I introduced the classroom observation and also I conducted student interviews and teacher interviews. So um, during the process, I found something that I'm really excited about and I didn't expect when I started the project. So I define intercultural interactions using my most familiar area, education disciplines. But then when I talked to a professor and when I observed their classroom, they told me, oh no, we don't think in this way. So in an architecture classroom, they think intercultural interaction should happen in their studio that integrate views from multiple stakeholders of different roles and cultural backgrounds. And in journalism, journalism classroom, it is associated with students from different backgrounds reporting on a news story on a very sensitive Hong Kong issue. And in law classroom and in physics classroom, they are all different. And very interestingly, um, the physics professor or teachers in physics discipline initially said, we don't do any intercultural interactions. Physics is universally true in any society. That's their first response. But then after we discussed a lot uh, back and forth, and, and they found, no, it's related to our science development in the sense that intercultural is associated with the constant involvement of uh, science theories, scientific theories, and how such involvement is affected by societal and political inferences. So bringing all these very interesting insights, we found some uh, um, useful uh, insights in our study. So these are courses uh, taught by disciplinary experts in their context. And we initially define intercultural interaction using educational theories. But through collaborative action research, we will be able to interpret them differently in local specific classroom. And we can collaboratively do course enhancement and development which is scholarly based and research informed. We also have a social publication as a guidebook that specifically uh, about enhancing intercultural interactions in Hong Kong with the specific student composition from mainland China, from Hong Kong, local and from international background. So the third attempt seems to be quite fruitful and then I'm going, I'm not going to go in any details into my fourth attempt, but because that will be never ending as I have several more attempts, but I still, I, I just want to share you with one point that my fourth attempt is related to partnering with students. Um, Professor Peter Felton, a strong supporter of SOTO in Elon University in the United States, say that working with students is one of the key successful factors to develop a successful SOTO. So that's um, why I also dip into partnering with the students. That's my fourth attempt. And I'm hoping to have more interdisciplinary and even transdisciplinary efforts after this. But let me show you my conceptual graph, or you say egg, it's a picture on how I classified my several attempt. So I think if you start to do SOTO, no matter which discipline you are in, you already start at least a multidisciplinary inquiry because it's about a systematic scholarly inquiry into teacher and learning in a disciplinary context. Or maybe you are working in several disciplinary uh, contexts. But with the questions of SOTO, that's to me already multidisciplinary. But to enter into an interdisciplinary space, I think there are several things to add to the um, formula. So um, the first thing I think is you need truly 
a true collaboration among inquirers from multiple disciplines. If you recall my early conversations with engineering professors, some of the collaboration was quite superficial at the beginning because we didn't really understand or appreciate each other's approach and the process. So when true collaboration happened, that's when interdisciplinarity happens. Or if you enter into a uh, teacher learning inquiry in multiple disciplines with an integrated framework as an outcome, I would consider that also as an interdisciplinary effort. And finally, which I didn't talk about, is a systematic inquiry into teacher learning in an interdisciplinary context. Now many programs and courses are naturally interdisciplinary, so that also counts as an interdisciplinary project, but I didn't involve in that yet. Finally, transdisciplinary is what I hope to um, reach, but I don't think I did. It's um, an inquiry in multiple disciplines, but with new definitions of your topic or its representation in the disciplines. And the discipline itself also needs to change, to evolve for transdisciplinary um, effort to happen. So um, here is several of my reflections. Through those conversations I showed to you, you might already be feeling about some discomfort. Actually, Miller Young and her colleagues have theorized what kind of discomfort you might encounter when you engage in any interdisciplinary subtle. Uh, one of those discomfort is the subjectivity, objectivity, and interdisciplinarity. Some of our engineering professors or STEM professors might think survey as very subjective. But on the other hand, some of our humanities colleagues could think survey as too objective because that's just not a natural way how narratives unfold. unfold. So um, this epistemological discomfort will happen in many interdisciplinary work. And another discomfort happens due to disrupted identity as a teacher, a researcher, a member of your disciplinary community, and a subtle. The subtle is uh, uh, what I added to this theory, because I, I, I like to call myself academic developer, academic, and also a subtler, and entering into this space and having this role is with discomfort, because many people misunderstand subtle um, in some, to some extent. And then I would like to reflect on the role of academic developer in supporting interdisciplinary subtle. So what we share with colleagues in the public space is work with disciplinary experts, provide knowledge and support on social co-develop instruments, interventions, and tools. But what I found that Tracy's secret theory is we need to listen carefully and learn the frustrations of social topic in the discipline. Imagine how, how social might resolve those frustrations and patiently and gradually work with the disciplinary experts to tackle the topic. And finally, we need to challenge ourselves to learn from them and develop and revise our social process. So, but I also record this session is recorded, so I don't know how my secret can, how long my secret can be kept within myself. Okay, my own growth. I've learned a lot over the past 10 years, starting from the first project when I didn't even know I was doing any sort of work. So I found I know about TNL issues, teacher and learning in different disciplines. I reflect on my own limitations and assumptions without seeing how it manifests in other disciplines. You just It's very difficult for you to appreciate and for you to challenge yourself as as you need a big picture, I think. And finally, I build a network learning together with our, all my partners. So if you are interested in looking at my publication, they are all with different people, different partners, different experts in, 
in, in my life, I don't know, working with different people forms a very strong sort of network for us to learn together. And uh, just a few practical suggestions. If you are interested in doing an interdisciplinary SOTO, remember, if you are doing SOTO, you are already in a multidisciplinary space, in my view. But you, if you want to go one more step further, you might think about gather a few disciplines that share the topic of your discipline. Or interestingly, if you identify some disciplines that are not typically associated with the topic, you will be able to find even exciting outcomes. Just like when I first talked to science and science professor, the physics professor, they said intercultural interactions are just not related to anything that I'm doing. But finally, we've uh, formulated and written a case study that features how intercultural interactions are uh, realized in science, scientific disciplines. And the third step is to contact people. They are, as, for example, champions in the discipline and define the topic and one another's role as flexible as possible because those roles will definitely change in the project process. Um, be brave to discuss and challenge each other's assumptions and then refine the topic roles and the processes in several cycles. Okay, just bring you a quote I really love. Um, it's about the conflict, the tension, the very intensive collision of disciplinary worldviews when we're involved in any interdisciplinary work. Um, I think only when we are able to challenge not only others, but ourselves and the underpinning assumptions, can we really benefit from interdisciplinarity. Okay, so some advertisement from our one of the community I'm involved in is subscribe to Soto Asia community. You will get updates every two months on Soto development around the world. You will get connected with passionate SOTO practitioners. And you will also be able to disseminate your SOTO news and development through the community coordinator. And this year, it happened to be me. Uh, previously, it was Professor Chin Huan Kun from National University of Singapore. And this year, I'm taking this task. Um, I don't know the coordinator next year, but it's not too late for you to join now. And uh, um, just allow me to promote our teacher and learning connections. Um, it's very flexible, so we welcome uh, articles at just only 1,000 words. So if you've done some sort of work, but you are not yet ready to publish it in a um, formal sort of journal, this is the venue that you could consider about uh, publication. OK, references. Thank you very much. That's the end of my presentation. Thank you very much to Dr. Tracy. This is uh, another very insightful sharing on the interdisciplinary approach in SOTA. So a very impressive uh, sharing of experience uh, on how experts yeah, from different disciplines can collaborate in SOTA. Dr. Tracy, I can really feel the challenges, the discomfort that you face <laughs> to initiate and to actualize these collaborations. Yeah? Thank you very much for your sharing once again. I have a couple of questions for Dr. Tracy as well, and this comes from uh, one of the uh, couple of uh, participants. The first question is, uh, well, the participants uh, would like to thank Dr. Tracy for her impressive uh, work. Uh, but uh, she wanted to know a little bit more on the difference between inter and transdisciplinary projects. Uh, may Dr. Tracy uh, further clarify on that? The oh, difference right. between inter and transdisciplinary projects. Yes, thank you for the question. And sorry, I just discovered it's in the Q&A and I only opened it just now. So I should have responded to Nacha earlier. Um, actually, this is a very good question. When I compiled the presentation, I was keeping reflecting on it. 
So I think to me the difference is when you do interdisciplinary, you integrate different disciplines while those disciplines still keep unchanged or largely unchanged. Meaning an engineering professor bringing some of his um, visions and uh, methods and I bring some educational research methods or sort of approaches we come together, we get some integrated outcome that's co-constructed by us. But this is still an engineering professor, and I'm mm -hmm. still Tracy from an educational background. We haven't changed ourselves much after the collaboration, uh, but we have some integrated outcome, a collective outcome. But for transdisciplinary, I think we ourselves need to evolve during the process. Maybe I would reflect, oh, my usual approach, action research, isn't that perfect for this sort of project. Let's bring, let me change my approach and integrate it with design thinking. And then I question my own assumption, like um, Dr. Johan Gitzma and Mark have said about is to deeply question and critically analyze your assumption. So what's education research? What sort of practice? Maybe it should be changed. So if you change your own assumptions and shape the your own discipline to a different level, I think transdisciplinary has happened. Yeah, that's, that's my um, thought. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Tracy, uh, for the, uh, for the yeah. input. Uh, I have another two questions. Um, this one comes from another participant who would like to ask about what types of guidance are most needed by the counterparts from non-education discipline. So based on your experience, you know, what are the types of guidance that are most needed by those from different uh, non-education disciplines? Okay, so allow me to do one advertisement. Find a partner in the education or social sciences discipline. So if um, I, I do feel that you, if you start from scratch, um, you you may be uh, immersed in the huge literature and you don't know whether uh, where you can start. So that's where academic developer, like people like me, can really provide my assistance and my support. And also, I will maybe it takes you like two days to find out um, a typical process of. Soto, but I might have it readily on my hand, just in my desktop. I can share with you in two minutes. So, um, actually, working with academic developer or someone from educational department or social sciences to me is the most uh, effective and efficient way. But of course, going to and join our community, going to some Soto journal, have a sense of how a Soto work is presented, giving you a overall sense of what it is about. Uh, my two uh, tip. <laughs> Thank you so much, uh, so much, Dr. Tracy. I believe this question is actually answered by you, but uh, let me just read it out. Do you think academics with educational background play a major role in assisting those from different disciplines to conduct some of their work properly? <laughs> Do you think academics with educational background play a major role in assisting those from different disciplines to conduct software work properly? Oh, I probably <laughs> wouldn't say so. So um, maybe Mark uh, knows about that more because he is properly an educational researcher. Actually, I pretend to be one. My previous discipline is in organizational studies. My PhD obtained in 2011 was on organizational studies. But then from 2011, I started to pick up educational research. So sorry, I didn't clarify that. So I wouldn't say academic developer or people who are enthusiastic about SOTO definitely come from all different disciplines. Maybe you would assume that 
and educational researcher will be more easily picking up social approach because there are some similarities between our approach. But you might not know these kind of people, Mark, please correct me if I'm wrong. <laughs> these kind of people are also the struggling the most because it's the discomfort and the identity struggling between your previous educational work published in higher education studies in how do you mean this kind of journal entering into a space a locally extra social study benefiting your colleagues teaching practice i mean this struggle is very strong for educational researcher even stronger for anybody else from a different discipline yeah that's my thought <laughs> Thank you, Dr. Tracy. Maybe the others want to uh, give your response to, to the question. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, please. My, please. My yeah, please. I, mean, I, I think it's a really interesting discussion. And um, I, I mean, I'm just to come in with a slightly different perspective. I think all of us actually come from very dis different disciplines. I, I actually started as an engineer, and I think it actually, my own view on this, and I've given some thought to this, it actually helps if you don't take too much of um, dogmatic view when it comes to going into educational research or scholarship or teaching and learning. Um, I find that um, having people from different disciplines helps and because educational research or scholarship of teaching or learning or however you want to define it is essentially an applied field. It benefits from more perspectives coming in. And um, I think I can say this about educational research. I think there are camps in educational research. Uh, which have been there for a long time. There's a qualitative quantitative divide, for example, and I don't think it is healthy when we talk with disciplinary experts to go and bring these uh, baggage over. That's just my, I want to put that out there and feel, anyone can feel free to disagree with me. So I think it's much better to take a pragmatic approach um, because at the end of the day, you're all working for impact on teaching and learning and that impact will come in different ways. Perhaps the others, uh, Johan and Mark, do you have anything to add? Mark, do you want to quickly jump in? <laughs> Are you muted, Mark? Oops, sorry. <laughs> uh, um, just to add to uh, Dr. Prem's very good uh, comment about being pragmatic, right? So we 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 have we come from different disciplines. We have different trainings. Uh, although mine is in education that, that uh, Tracy pointed out, uh, it, it's, uh, it's a learning process, I think, and um, to, to inquire is, is um, like what um, colleagues have uh, shared at the word cloud, to have uh, the curiosity to, to uh, uh, be clear of your purpose. In other words, uh, is it for growth? Is it for, for uh, professional development? Is it for promotion? And um, of course, there are also different uh, levels or ways of of um, sharing. I think uh, uh, colleagues may want to start rather than uh, based on self reflection, rather than you know uh, aiming to to publish in a top tier journal. So the, the the whole process can can occur over time, right? And and uh, Tracy, of course, shared her very. Uh, wonderful journey uh, into into Soto itself, and and that's so uh, uh, illuminating to to know that uh, we can start from simple questions. Uh, we 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 just need to to think a little bit deeper about those questions. Uh, uh, we in, in other words, we can problematize those questions carefully, right, and and draw from it to 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 uh, understand what exactly is is the learning concern of our students, and from there we we can uh, develop ways of uh, supporting them using a very pragmatic approach. And we, we already have those uh, uh, research skills with us because we are, we, we are trained in our, our own discipline to do, to do research. So the, I, I don't think it, uh, uh, we, are, we are lacking in that area, but uh, it's, it's all about uh, uh, thinking about uh, our own practice uh, in a more pragmatic, in a more systematic way. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you so much. Could I could I, could I quickly jump in, Chen Jun, just very quickly and yeah, sure, and sure. say, and, and so I think this is a really important question. Fully agree with Preman, not to be dogmatic. 
Um, and uh, uh, fully agree also, especially with Mark's last point, which is we already have research skills and knowledge in our own discipline. And uh, that can be a drawback sometimes, uh, going back to what Tracy was saying, if one, one can kind of be blinded, if one has an educational research background, to the possibilities that colleagues in other disciplines bring based on their own disciplinary expertise. We don't all have to do randomized controlled trials um, when we do SOTL. Um, we don't have to know social science methodologies to do SOTL. We can, and good SOTL can be done in that way, of course. But, uh, you know, it's also possible to do SOTL by close reading if you are from the humanities. It's possible to do SOTL um, in, in, in many different ways. Uh, the key point is that it's about systematic inquiry into your own teaching practice and your students' learning within your own context and based on the kind of knowledge and skills that you already have to your, at your disposal. And again, you know, the, the diagram that we showed from the Tony Hardland book on the different, le uh, different levels of SOTL, the public and the private, that he makes a very strong case in that book precisely for this pragmatic approach and drawing on our own research skills and research knowledge. So we don't have to reinvent ourselves and uh, you don't need to become, have to become an educational researcher in order to become a sotler. You can actually move from organizational studies as Tracy Zhu did and become a sotler, right? That's entirely possible. Of course, then it's good for us to learn about social science methodologies if those are appropriate for what we're trying to achieve in our inquiry into our students' learning. But that's, uh, it's not a necessity, is, is our view. And, and certainly if it's about, about learning professionally about one's impact on one's students, that has to be done within the context of the discipline or across disciplines. Thank you so much yeah, for all your input. Yeah, I do agree with what you all said, you know, where, um, we should allow and we should respect, you know, the different uh, disciplines yeah, as they actually know different methodologies, which may actually produce some kind of insight that may not be revealed through the social science kind of research methodology. Yeah, I think uh, we should also look into the, the benefits or the advantages that they have, you know, by, by utilizing their methodologies to learn more about our teaching and learning issues. Yeah. Yeah, thank you so much yeah, for the input. I think I have.